Now, before we begin, I highly recommend you check out the Voice of the Nets podcast with Chris Carino. We did get some sound bites from the interview that was done with Nick Claxton um, only about under a week ago. So uh, make sure to give that a watch if you want the full piece of content. But uh, we will be using a few sound bites in this video. Enjoy. Do you feel the jump this year? Did, do you feel a confidence level? Because it looks like it. It just shows the, the confidence that the organization has in me. Um, giving me this, the starting job this year was big for my confidence and not not seeing anybody in front of me, how it's been in the past. So just knowing like, all right, now it's, it's my time. I, I bring the best version of myself on a night to night basis and I'm a lot stronger now. I feel like my, my body is ready to you know, withstand the rigorous NBA schedule. The Brooklyn Nets roster holds a great level of competition for playing time. However, there's one position on the court which doesn't hold that truth. The center position. Which, come the start of the season, left an opportunity for 23-year-old center Nick Claxton to finally make a name for himself. And boy, has he embraced the opportunity with both hands. Today, we'll be looking at what he's done to transform himself into a serious Defensive Player of the Year candidate from being merely a walking question mark with regards to his future. In the seasons preceding this year, Clax has faced numerous stumbling blocks, having not played more than 47 games in a season. He's always been a low-volume shooter, taking only the most high-percentage shots in the restricted area. And by that, I mean dunks. Lots and lots of dunks. He's always been a good enough rebounder, capable of a block, and the signs were there. But with more minutes has come an increase in statistics. To continue, Clax, as of January the 8th, led the league in blocks, field goal percentage, two-point field goal percentage, effective field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, and block percentage. It's seen him have a stretch of games with three or more blocks in six straight games, a feat that was last reached when Sean Bradley's 11-game streak 27 seasons ago happened. So, aside from the metrics telling a story, what is the eye test saying? Well, from an offensive standpoint, Clax has shown expansion in his skill set concerning that area. I mean, you're, you're doing stuff that's historic. You're in the 70s every month in field goal percentage. Well, what's the, the thought process with the way you're finishing around the rim this year? I would say it's a combination of things. I would say it's a combination of strength, definitely me getting stronger and being able to take bumps better mm -hmm. and just finishing with both hands, being a lot more comfortable doing that. Like, I'm, I'm going at guys, I'm finishing around people, finishing over people, and it's, it's definitely a lot of skill finishes and just a lot of work that I've put in over these past few years just with touch. No longer is Clax simply a dunker. He has adopted a number of post moves in his game to score easy baskets that correlate with such high shooting percentage. Last season, Clax would have difficulty putting the ball on the floor in order to manipulate the space and allow him to overcome the threat of multiple defenders converging. This year, the hard work in the weight room has paid off, as he looks much cleaner in that regard, often sending defenders in the air with a simple pump fake. Clax also loves a good hook shot, which he's done to a fair level of success this season, whilst he also seems to generally utilize his footwork much more effectively and with or without facing contact has utilized said footwork to be able to score off the window with ease. The stats line up well with these developments. Clax before this season failed to register a field goal percentage higher than 36% for shots from three to 10 feet. However, this season, that number has drastically ascended to 53%, highlighting a better understanding of the right shot in combination with the execution being much improved. With all this said, I can't help but emphasize that the improvements in the net system overall has allowed Clax to flourish in this department as well. Clax is shooting a career high percentage of shots within zero to three feet. And one of the reasons for this is that Clax is often the recipient of the extra feed following a drive, with Royce often being the facilitator in this situation. 
and the attention that KD and Kyrie attract sometimes has defenders in no man's land, and an alley-oop for Klax is always on. Klax has already exceeded his PB for dunks in a season, and we're only just under halfway through. Overall, as Klax has become more developed offensively, KD and Kyrie have been more so inclined to pass the ball, and with ball movement being a benefactor of Jacques Vaughan's new system, the offense has thrived with the team winning over 80% of their games since December the 1st. Klax being one of the major beneficiaries and helping us in leading the charge. The other reason for this insane Nets turnaround is the defensive activity. And Klax has been in the midst of all that. Like on the defensive end, you've got to, you've got to switch and guard point guards. You've got to protect the rim. You've got to get out and contest threes on guys. Do you feel the weight of that? Is that something that maybe you enjoy? That's what I want. I've been doing it since I've been in the league, and I feel like you know, I'm the best at it now that I've been. And I take on the challenge every single night. That's my job. That's what the team needs for me to do at a high level for us to succeed. Klax has been a block machine, being such an imposing threat as a rim protector that offensive players shit themselves every single time they're guarded by him. Klax has blocked your typical shots at the rim, he's blocked mid-range jump shots, he's blocked three-pointers. There's been chase down blocks, there's been excellent defensive recovery blocks, there's been an elegance to his play and he seems to enjoy it as well. Klax has also been able to change games purely on the back of his shot contesting. Constantly, he remains disciplined. Offensive players, big or small, find it difficult to shake him off and he makes life extremely tough. Sometimes, Klax just being there and present is simply enough. Help defense has been a strong part of the net system in recent memory, and Klax has either been good enough to hold a player up before reinforcements arrive, or he does the dirty work himself. In all fairness though, we saw the signs of these elements last year. It was just about the recognition part coming this year as the numbers skyrocketed. Klax has also been fairly persistent on the offensive glass this year. He's also been willing to get in a scrap and fight for loose balls. He's been known in the net space to make game-winning plays in intangible ways. And I think that's what makes it incredibly easy to underappreciate his value to the Nets team. His tandem partnership with KD has allowed this Nets team to reach new heights, primarily because of the fact that defense was seen in the past as a weakness and not a strength paired with Ben Simmons who addresses another batch of needs for this team on defense, all of a sudden this ball club becomes even more formidable. To highlight the Nets' defensive transformation with Klax as the pioneer, let's analyze some metrics. Last season, the Nets were allowing twos at 53.8% and threes at 36.1%. Whilst this season teams are shooting marginally better on threes, twos are being allowed at 50.3%, a considerably lower mark, and the presence of Klax plays a large role in that. Within five to nine feet, the Nets only allow field goals at a clip of 36.5%, the best mark in the entire league. At less than five feet, 60%, which is third best in the entire league. At 10 to 14 feet, the second best mark in the league, and at 15 to 19 feet, the third best mark in the league. Whilst you could place credit on the Nets overall for being defensively cohesive and sound to force shooters into difficult shots like that, Klax is also a large part of this defensive coverage that rightfully ensures that these difficult shots are more often than not miscued. Obviously, no NBA player is perfect, but if Klax wants to take yet again another leap and get a massive payday, here's what we'll need to see. First and foremost, the free throw shooting is a tough watch. Whilst the new disjointed form seems to help the issue at hand, most of the time Klax is falling short on free throws or sending them wide. Even hitting a respectable enough 65% from the line would be a sizable improvement and would deter both oppositions from playing hacker Klax and the Nets from not putting him on the court when needed because of him being a liability. The second is a jump shot. I don't expect huge gains in the near future, but if he can develop a mid-range, that would be spectacular for his game. A lot of the game today, they want the bigs to be stretched guys that can mm -hmm. shoot jump shots. That's really not what your game is. 
Not right do you, now. Do you think, I was going to say, do you think you're going to look to develop that more? I can't play like this forever where I'm just running and jumping. I won't be, I won't be this athletic my whole entire career. Um, this is what the team needs for me right now. And so I've really just honed in on that and just starting in my role. But definitely down the road, I definitely want to, you know, develop a jump shot. Or something I'll, I'll, I'll definitely work at over, over the summers and add to my game. Additionally, could add a little bit of bulk. We know there's serious question marks surrounding whether he has the capacity to be able to defend bully ball big men like Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. Whilst I think his lanky frame definitely favours his mobility and his athleticism, he's already shown improvements on that front. As previously mentioned with the way in which he's able to score through contact, where in past years he'd be overwhelmed and shy away from all that. To end off his foul trouble issues. There's games where we don't see as much of Clax because he picks up some fouls in a rational fashion. We know with Clax being the defensive anchor he is, and the way in which the Nets feed off of that to fuel all other elements of their current successes, it's imperative that he's able to play upwards of 30 minutes for all that he does. Though, he only averages 28 or so minutes this year, and the key is getting that to around 30, so Clax's play can fuel our success even more. Overall, Clax has been an exceptional player, probably the best and most consistent behind KD and Kyrie. He's flourished into a player who can dictate the swing of games through his exuberance and his energy is infectious. Whilst he probably won't get any award that recognizes his play this season, this video hopefully captures the extent to which all that is happening. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new for more Nets content and have a good one.